So far we've only worked with inputs. All of the logic that we've looked at so far is waiting for inputs to change state and then it turns on a step complete bit. But we weren't actually controlling any outputs, <coughs> which after all is it is the whole object of a PLC, is to watch a pattern of inputs when they match a completion of a step. Then we go on to the next step, turn on different outputs, turn off some of the old outputs, and wait until the results of changing the state of those outputs, the result in motion, and changes in the process cause inputs to change state until they match the next step, and then the next step is complete. In, in your lab, we had you put in these two rungs, rung 9 and rung 10. Notice that both rungs had the same memory location addressed by the OTE instruction. So either rung turns on, we'll call it output 2. Both of these rungs behave identical. I just wanted to illustrate that sometimes we have more instructions in the rungs than we actually need. So in rung 9, if step 0 is complete, but not step 1, not step 2, and not step 3, then turn on output 2. When step 2, or step 1 is complete, then the first ladder in that rung is false. The second ladder step 2 complete and not step 3, step 2 is not complete yet. So once step 1 is completed that rung goes false and output 2 goes off. In the second ladder of the first rung, rung 9, when step 2 is complete and not step 3 then we turn on output 2 again. And then when step 3 is complete both ladders of that single rung, in other words both ORD sets of permissives are false and output 2 is off. Now if we look at the second rung, rung, not rung 10, when step 0 is complete, output 2 comes on. When step 1 is complete, that part of the rung goes false and output 2 goes off. When step 2 is complete, but not step 3, output 2 comes back on and then when step 3 is complete, both ladders, both ORD sets of permissives are false and output 2 is de-energized. So if you compare those two rungs, they both behave exactly the same. Logically, if step one is not complete, then only step zero could be complete. So once step one is complete, we don't need not step two, not step three, because they're sequential. So both those rungs are identical. Uh, the long and short of using logic of this logical concept for the purposes of sequencing a process is that in the rung that controls each output bit memory location you have to have a branch for each step that energizes the output and that branch has the step that energizes and that de-energizes that bit. So if you look at the first rung or the first ladder in either one of those rungs, step 0 turns output 2 on and step 1 complete turns it off. If you had a process with 20 steps and an output that needed to be energized every other step, you would need 10 branches. And each of the 10 branches would require a permissive to ensure that the memory location that controls that output associated with it was off during any subsequent steps. So doing, adding the output control logic from a sequencer is another whole, another whole phase to this. So you have two pieces. You have the sequencer input logic and the sequencer output logic.